Hello everyone, this is Emu Chicken from Team Pandori, and this box from 106 has arrived. Let's check her out. Magic! Yeah, it seems like we have another Android box. This time in the colors of Nvidia with 4GB RAM and an Amlogic 922XJ. I want to know how well can this perform. Let's open her up. We've got a manual. Quite thick. Multiple languages. The main event. The box. That looks very nice. Very different to the other boxes we've had on the channel. This one has multiple USB ports. No need for a USB hub. Underneath we have four well-placed rubber feet. Let's see what else we have. HDMI cable. USB-C to USB-A cable. Remote control. Very light, a bit clicky. These are attachments for the power adapter. Could be for UK, US or Europe. US is also compatible in Japan. Click. It's 3 amp, 5 volt. And there's a bit of weight to this. Feels very sturdy. What we have here is a miniature sword. Can be used for practicing kendo. Buttering bread, perhaps. Or as an aerial. You can twist it on here and it bends up. If you don't need Wi-Fi, you don't need it. Let's have a close-up. Here's the front. We've got an IR sensor and a light. On this side we have a miniature hole which has the root switch, the Wi-Fi antenna and also one of them lock things. On the back we have the power switch, three USB ports, micro SD and also a USB-C. On the other side, we've got a headphone jack, HDMI, SPDIF, LAN, and the power ports. On close inspection, this looks like a nice unit indeed. So let's check out the specs. On paper, this Android TV box looks to be running one of the fastest Amlogic chips. MULEC also has a DTB file ready for this unit. It'll be interesting to see how well this performs in-game. When we turn on the box, we're greeted to Android 9, Seems to be a clean install with not much bloatware. Many manufacturers are concerned about DRM and viewing of streaming video. This is proof here. Let's get onto some benchmarks. Here's Antutu and Geekbench 5. Thermals is keeping very cool at around 45 degrees Celsius. Moving on to Android, this is at two times buffered resolution. We're only getting 50 frames per second. If we switch it to unbuffered, we get 60 frames a second, and it's at 1080p, which looks a lot nicer, but it's not at 100% throughout the whole race. So if we go towards Casino Town here, we'll see it slows down to, ugh, yeah, about 42 frames a second. For the price we're paying, I'd expect something a lot better. Out the box, we could not choose the Vulcan renderer, so I had to check out the Mini X website to update the firmware. I followed this PDF file and managed to flash the rooted 006A firmware. First time it failed, I had to reinsert the USB and try again. If you're doing this, whatever you do, don't pull out the power cord. After a restart of Android, we can choose Vulkan from the settings. This will give us 100% speed through most of the race, but we are limited to two times resolution. Also got a bit of Redream gameplay. We're looking at full speed with Dead or Alive 2. One main issue for me is that most apps on Android think I'm using a phone. I do actually have a gamepad in my hand, but yeah. Heck, let's bring out MULEC. So, MULEC is a great front end to use if you want to use old retro games on your compatible Amlogic TV box. It can be used to set up all your games in a nice menu, much like a RetroPie, 
and it can be used outside of Android with your gamepad. If you want to know more about this system, please check out our Emuelic Masterclass. Here's some gameplay. Take into account that all systems that ran well on the 905X3 will run great here too. So this is a bit of Metal Slug 5. Dragon's Lair 2, Daphne. N64 is always hit and miss on these things. FPS will depend on the game. This is Road Rash on the 3DO. And Saturn Bomberman. Performance highly depends on the game. This is Sega Rally. Daytona on the Dreamcast. This is one of the harder games to run. If we change graphic settings, we can get full speed. King of Fighters 11, Atomic Wave. Here's a bit of Tekken 6 on the PSP. PSP performance will mirror what we saw in Android, but the lack of Vulcan renderer will mean that more difficult games to run will need frame skip or the God of War frame limiter to give us constant performance. Checking inside this thing, we've got this huge heatsink. Well, it's, it's long and wide. We've got a CMOS battery over here. That'll be for remembering settings. Let's see what's underneath. Just four small screws. I can pop this off. Ooh. On the right we have two RAM chips as well as the NAND and a very thin thermal pad. You can see it just crumbles away. Underneath is the S922X chip but I'm going to use new thermal pads. This one's G-Lid. I got this from the alley. Just cut away what you need. And I'm going to put this on the RAM chips and the NAND. I want them cool as well because they were getting covered. And for the chip, I'm going to use MX4. This stuff is great. You can be as messy as you want and it won't short out anything. Let's put a little bit on the heatsink and spread this out with uh, one of these cotton buds and then screw it back together. After a few rounds of Outrun 2, 37 degrees. Yeah. To the pros and cons. For the pros, it looks great. Stays very cool even at stock. It's rooted so we can use Amuelec, and it has Vulcan once you've updated everything. For the cons, very expensive and a lot of wasted potential. With it having such a large heatsink, this box could be clocked much higher. So if you wanted a cool looking box, yeah, this is pretty good, I guess. But if you want to wear some makeup, now you get the mub, the makeup box. You could get five of these for one Mini X. A few systems will run better on the Mini X, but no way five times better. If you want a significant step up, I suggest the J4125 Mini PC. In the under $200 bracket, there's no competition. The only advantage that the Mini X will have is that it's completely silent. If this box were $100 or so, we would recommend this. But for the time being, Mini X 
Nah. Get the mini PC. This has been Amy Chicken for Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the flippity flip.